Hello and welcome to Lecture 8 in Organic Chemistry. Today we're going to look at uh, fractional distillation processes and complementary separation processes. These are the industrial processes applied to crude oil uh, that comes out of the ground here in Alberta. Um, really this is the course unto itself. We, we survey these processes to give you the, the, the sense of um, sort of the industry behind uh, oil and gas in the province. But ultimately, we're, we're, we're dipping our toe into a, into a lake here. Of course, in terms of Chemistry 30, these are the knowledge outcomes prescribed by Alberta Learning. They form the basis for the, your diploma exam. And um, they're the knowledge areas that the province wants you to master in anticipate of your, anticipation of your diploma. Hopefully, you've been referring back to this page from time to time to get a sense of how well you're your understanding of the materials progressing. Fractional distillation is the process whereby different crude oil fractions are separate from one another. And here's a, a mock-up of a fractional distillation tower. I don't own this diagram, uh, courtesy of the, um, rather credit to the BBC for its use. Um, because I don't own it, um, I, I'm using um, uh, the, the fair use exception to copyright laws for educational purposes. Um, that means I'm not allowed to monetize this video, so you shouldn't see ads as you watch it. Uh, if you see an ad, could you let me know and I'll have to have it removed. Um, fractional distillation takes advantage of differential boiling points, as seen in the tower here. So crude oil is pumped in near the bottom and we heat the tower. This says 350 degrees. Uh, I've seen these as high as 500 degrees. And um, we remove, we separate fractions though based upon uh, differential boiling points. So, for example, as you move up the tower, um, excuse me, I've lost my mouse. Yeah, there it is. Um, different fractions uh, come off the the tower based upon similarity of boiling point. So each fraction comes off uh, uh, according to that. For example, here's the kerosene fraction. So this would be a mixture of a great number of hydrocarbons with a similar boiling point. Uh, compounds at the top of the tower have very low boiling points. So these are the, the gases, the natural gas and, and, the, and the propane and whatnot. These are low boiling points. They're very volatile and they ignite quite easily. Um, compounds near the bottom of the tower uh, have very high boiling points. So um, these are high boiling point materials. These are the asphalt and the tars. They're not volatile, they don't flow easily, and they certainly don't ignite easily. And um, a lot of them are near solid in, in phase. Once we've separated uh, hydrocarbon fractions based upon boiling points, we um, employ a process called solvent extraction uh, to further refine uh, petroleum fractions. Um, impurities and certain hydrocarbon fractions that are desirable are dissolved off in certain combinations of solvents, leaving behind uh, the remaining crude hydrocarbon mixture. This is a physical process. It's taking advantage of differential solubilities of the hydrocarbon components in the fraction. Dewaxing is a similar process. Well, it's a complementary process. We want to remove the wax fraction found in a, a crude oil mixture. Um, we do so by cooling it. And the, the, the wax uh, component of the fraction comes out uh, as a condensate in solid phase. A further process called hydrogenation involves the addition of hydrogen gas to a crude oil mixture. It reacts with the sulfur present, which is an impurity in the, in the um, crude oil fraction, to form hydrogen sulfide, which we then can then remove. Quite often, when, uh, when you have a fraction of hydrocarbons, certain components are more desirable and others are less desirable. And there are two complementary processes called cracking and reformation that we use to increase the yield of the more desirable components of the fraction. Cracking involves a, a group of chemical processes whereby large hydrocarbons are broken down into shorter ones. Um, historically, we used a process of heat and pressure, a thermal cracking process. We've now replaced that with a catalytic cracking process. <coughs> Excuse me. This reduces the amount of undesirable end products and is much less wasteful as a result. So here we see a C17 component 
being cracked into a C9 and a C7 component. <coughs> Excuse me. With um, some coke, which is which is really undesirable. It's, it's a waste end product coming off. Uh, this mo the process has been modified now to include the introduction of hydrogen into the catalytic cracking system, and this eliminates the coke production completely. So again, here's a similar process uh, which, which has been cata cat uh, catalyzed. You'll see hydrogen has been introduced. So we get a C9 fraction, and we get a C8 fraction this time, instead of the C7 fraction, completely eliminating the coke. We also crack ethane uh, into ethene, uh, which is a bit of a misnomer. We're going from C2H6 to C2H4, a saturated compound to an unsaturated compound. Um, it's also referred to as dehydrogen, dehydrogenation, which is probably a, a more suitable um, name for it. We're essentially removing a hydrogen molecule and a single bond is being converted into a double bond. Uh, of course, ethane, the reason we're doing it is ethane is quite plentiful. It's found in the, in the natural gas fraction of a distillation, whereas ethene is less um, common uh, and uh, less plentiful and much more desirable for industrial purposes. It, it then goes on to in the process of manufacturing plastics. We can also reform uh, uh, petroleum fraction through a process called reformation and alkylation. Reforming gasoline involves the conversion of aliphatic components into aromatic components. And this leads to gasolines that burn much better. And again, it's a catalytic process. Here we see heptane being converted to methylbenzene plus hydrogen gas. And again, the methylbenzene has got more desirable combustion uh, properties than does the heptane. Alkylation is a complementary process. Here we're increasing the branching in a hydrocarbon. So straight chain hydrocarbons are being converted into their branch chain isomers. And it's therefore called isomerization because one isomer is being converted into another. So here we see heptane, uh, which doesn't burn particularly well in an in, in engine, being converted to 2,4-dimethylpentane, again in the presence of a catalyst. And again, the reason behind the process is the latter burns much better in, in automobiles. So that's the end of the lecture. Um, the course doesn't do uh, these industrial processes justice. Having said that, it's a, it's a course about chemistry uh, rather than uh, the oil and gas industry in the province. Um, read any, make any assigned readings that your teacher assigns. Uh, certainly do the homework and um, get a sense of what the, the course calls for in terms of uh, both unit exam questions and diploma exam questions. So that ends the organic chemistry piece of uh, my lectures. Um, there's, um, I've, I've yet to review an old a diploma exam in this area to give you a sense of the type of questions you can anticipate. Um, I'll see you next time when we talk about uh, introductory electrochemistry. Thank you very much.